नमस्कार वेलकम टू दिस फर्स्ट सेशन ऑफ द फोर्थ अध्याय ऑफ श्री भगवत गीता वी स्टार्ट विद ग्रेटिट्यूड टुवर्ड्स द लॉर्ड थ्रू हिज ग्रेस एवरीथिंग इज पॉसिबल वी प्रे टू दिस गुरु शिष्य परंपरा थ्रू व्हिच दिस नॉलेज इज प्रिजर्व एंड ट्रांसमिटेड सो एज टू रीच अस आई पे माय रिस्पेक्ट्स टू माय गुरुजी पूज्य गुरुमा विद हुज ग्रेस आई एम एबल टू लर्न दिस स्क्रिप्चर्स एंड शेयर दिस अंडरस्टैंडिंग विद यू ओम सहना भवतु सहनौ भुनक्तु सह वीर करवाहै तेजस्वीनावधी तमस्तु मेत्षावै ओ शाति 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 सो लेट अस रिकैपिटुलेट द फर्स्ट टू द थर्ड अध्याय टू समराइज दैम इन नटशेल द फर्स्ट अध्याय टॉक्स अबाउट द धर्म अधर्म अविवेक which is the root cause of all the problems which is the root cause of uh, the delusion the moha that happened in the minds of arjuna adharma adharma viveka was also there in duryodhana but arjuna is the person who gets this moha and the root cause of this moha the shastras tell us that it is agnana ignorance ignorance of what our own atma swarupa our own self and this person who has this ignorance is the candidate for this kind of a knowledge what is revealed in the gita ji and that person is the adhikari here arjuna is the adhikari not duryodhana because he has shishyatva he dis- becomes a disciple he surrenders to the lord and uh, beca- becomes and he is on the dharma path but here he is got mudha he has become mohit and that's why he is the atmagnan adhikari in the second adhyaya bhagwan reveals this knowledge the tatvik knowledge the divine knowledge of the self atma gnana brahma gnana which is one and the same according to the lord and then describes the principles of karma yoga starting from the 39 shloka and uh, describes the principles 47th and the 48th shloka karmanya vadika raste and finally from the 54th shloka bhagwan describes the attributes of that wise person who is firmly rooted in wisdom stita pragna mahapurusha in response to the question by arjuna So Bhagwan describes a gnana, then karma, and then again gnana. And the third adhyay is more detailed description of the different attitudes of karma yoga. Starts with Arjuna's question that tell me one thing, whether gnana or karma, what should I do? And Bhagwan tells him that karma yoga is the one that you need to do. And finally, now the fourth adhyay is about how to develop renunciation from karma by this understanding of the gnana. by the self knowledge so it's called the gnana karma sanyasa yoga so karma sanyasa through gnana how is this what is this understanding what is that gnana essentially what bhagwan wants us to do is from karma pravrutti again from karma yoga bhagwan wants to lead us to gnana and that is the akarma our own atma swarupa so essentially as we discussed at the beginning of the third adhyaya that pravrutti and nivrutti are the two marg but these are the same mark it's not that they are to lokesmen do it on ishtam and bhagwan says pravrutti nivrutti karma yoga karma sanyasa both these are not two different paths both are the same path initially we have to be into pravrutti into karma marga and then we have to renounce these actions through gnana and what is that understanding that bhagwan describes in the fourth adhyay before that let us recapitulate what is karma yoga bhagwan says it's a beginning of the spiritual journey and the way we do our karma our attitudes during our actions we uh, we need to surrender to the lord <clears throat> not to have attachment to our actions uh, to uh, you know to remember smarana the lord all the time and uh, to please the lord we should do all our karmas so that god has given me this duty i want to please the lord and it is as if it is the lord's order He is the master of this universe. He is the creator, and he has given me this responsibility. As if it's his order, I must follow. Follow at his order. Being a nimitta matra, being being an instrument in the hands of the Lord, he has given me this responsibility, this duty. I should do it in the best possible way. Being an instrument, not that I am the doer with that abhimana, but as if I am just an instrument for this uh, for this job to be done. I'm just a trustee for these things to be done to be managed. and that is the and as a duty as my dharma playing different roles in my life as per my duty i should play the roles in the best possible way 
and when i get the results or outcomes of the actions or whatever i do whenever i get the result i should accept them completely as a prasada buddhi as we accept the prasada and share it with others so these are all the attitudes of karma yoga that we have seen in the third adhyaya now let us come to the fourth adhyaya which is gnana karma sanyasa yoga initially bhagwan talks about the gnana parampara the lineage of knowledge then he talks about his own avatara swarupa his own incarnations and then he talks about the nishkam karma yoga how we can do it with the gnana being selfless karma and then he describes the actions of the yogi the gnani purusha how they do this karma and what is the virtues what are the mahima the gnana and then he goes on to describe the 12 different types of yagnas you know already showed in the third adhyaya what is yagna buddhi how we should do our karma yoga and here he describes this yagna buddhi in a much more detailed fashion with all the 12 yagnas and says that the knowledge yagna the knowledge uh, yagna is the best of all these 12 yagnas and finally he describes the benefits of this knowledge and uh, what, how it helps us in our life <clears throat> so let us start with the first shloka the fourth adhyay it starts opens with bhagwan's statements he starts speaking shri bhagavan uvacha imam vivasvate yogam rukta vahanam avyayam knowledge Bhagwan has described this knowledge in the second adhyaya, the Atma Gnana, and then he has talked about the third adhyaya, the Karma Yoga. All this yoga, which is avyaya, which is imperishable, he says, "Aham vivasvate proktavan." First, I gave it to the sun, Surya. Vivasvan means Surya. At the creation, at the beginning of the creation, Bhagwan says, "I gave it to sun," and then Vivasvan Manave Praha. Surya then passed on to Manu, the first human, Manava. so manu was the first human is uh, for the benefit of the entire mankind because it was like a you know an instruction manual for the entire mankind when we go and buy a new computer or a tv or any new object we get an instruction manual along with it how to use it similarly at the beginning of the creation bhagwan says i gave this instruction manual how to live your life for the humans for the for the entire humanity for the human being at large this was not meant to be a hindu religion scripture it is meant for the humanity at large it is a completely a religion neutral scripture gita ji is not of any hinduism but it's for the humanity at large so there is no mention of 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 uh, the dharma word dharma in gita ji does not mean religion it has a much much more wider implication than than religion will come to that and manu ikshvaku eva abravit manu gave it to king Ik- ikshvaku So this is how, from the parampara, this is going on. Bhagwan says, and Ikshvaku was a king in whose dynasty Sri Ram Bhagwan took birth. He had incarnated, and uh, <clears throat> so this is how this knowledge parampara started with the Lord. And this knowledge parampara, Bhagwan has already described described in the third adhyaya, Lokesmin, Dvidha Nishta, Karma Yoga Nishta, and Gnana Yoga Nishta. These are the two parts. Bhagwan says, but for most of us, Karma Yoga is a preferential part because we are all inclined. we are all adhikaritva adhikari for the karma marga and then only through shuddhi we can then go into the gnana marga so this essentially these two parts can be a householder's path the grihastha path which is more karma pradhana where we do a lot of karma karma and karma yoga and the path of the renunciate which is more predominantly a gnana pradhana marga and uh, where there is mainly the purpose is to obtain this atma gnana and this can also be activity or pravrutti karma and renunciate nivrutti karma akarma or nivrutti and that is what bhagwan is describing here <clears throat> bhagwan says this knowledge that i had given as times passed by it became nearly extinct evam parampara praptam imam rajarsha yo viduhu sakale neha mahata yogo nashta parantapa he parantapa oh my dear arjun who has given a lot of tap tap means pain miseries to his opponents his enemies 
and that's how strong Arjuna is. He is the mightiest of all warriors. Evam parampara praptam. In this way, this knowledge which was which was passed on from generations together, imam yoga, this yoga, this yoga is gnana yoga, karma yoga, this parampara, the gnana parampara, Bhagavan says, rajarshaya viduhu. Even the rajarshis knew this. Rajarshis were, they were kings and they were rishis, both a combination. So they were wise, enlightened kings. Normally kings used to be kshatriyas, but even the, and, and the knowledge was the, for the brahman. Brahman were the people who, who would uphold this knowledge and pass it from generations. But in earlier ancient times, they were the kings were also wise. They were enlightened with this knowledge. So that's why they were called Rajarshis. And they ever knew this knowledge because they would then protect their people accordingly with this knowledge. Mahata Kale Nasaha. As the times went by, one says, Yoga Ishtiha Nashtaha. This knowledge became nearly extinct. It did not become completely extinct. Ihan Ashtaha means it became nearly extinct. And this, today also we see that in Kali Yuga today, most of the common people do not have access to this knowledge. They don't understand what is given in the Veda, what is the Sara of the Upanishad, what is the Tattva, what is this, what is, who is Lord, who is this world, who is a Jiva, what are the, what, what is my real self. We don't know this. And that's why it, the reason Guruji explains to us is, is because of our Vahirmukhata, our outwardly going nature, where we just keep on seeing outside and seeing the world and you know doing some actions in the world because without going inside, the spiritual knowledge can only be attained by going within us. It is within us, it is Antarmukhata is needed. And the other reason is extreme busyness. Everybody is very, very busy. Because there are so many gadgets today, there are so many, you know, there is TV, there is computer, there is phone, there is a lot of social things, social media, social networks. We're all so busy outside that we don't have time to go within ourselves. We don't have time to, you know, this knowledge, tradition, to understand this. It requires a lot of time, patience, involvement, commitment, and we need to pursue on this path. Only then we can understand this Atma Jnana. So that's why Bhagwan is trying to tell Arjuna and through Arjuna to the humanity that that's probably the reason why he needs to take birth. It is said that one of the main purpose of the incarnation of Lord Krishna as Krishna was to give the message of Gita Ji to the humanity. This is a message which we can understand. The messages in the Upanishad is something more hidden but Gita Ji is something that can be revealed by a learned Guru and that's why Bhagavan says and he's going to talk about the incarnation in the next few shlokas, so that's why he's making this, you know, the foundation, why he needs to take birth. And then he says, I'm telling you, Arjuna, the same profound secret knowledge. Sa evayam maya tekya yoga prokta puratanaha bhakto si me sakha cheti rahasyam yetad uttamam Bhagavan says, sa eva ayam puratana yoga, the same original, the ancient knowledge that was given to Surya at the beginning of the creation. Bhagavan says, Mayate Proktaha Adya. Today, I'm telling you, because Gita Ji started on the Mahabharata and Bhagavan within three hours revealed the entire Gita Ji to Arjuna. Of course, for us, it takes many months and years to understand Gita Ji. So that's why Bhagavan is saying, I told you today in the second and the third Adhyaya, it's not far away. It's just about maybe half an hour ago, I have told you the same original knowledge, the same ancient knowledge I'm telling you. Bhagavan says, and why is it telling Arjun? Bhagavan gives a reason also. He says, Itime bhaktaha, because you are my devotee. And it's important to be a devotee of the Lord to understand this knowledge. Cha sakha asi. And also you have been my friend for so many years. Bhagavan and Arjuna have been together as Sakha for many, many years. He etat uttamam rahasyam. That's why I'm telling you this profound secret knowledge. Bhagavan says, why is it called rahasya or profound uttamam, the highest known knowledge? Because it is kept hidden. Most of the common men do not understand this, do not look within or do not get this knowledge. <clears throat> That's why it is more like a secret. It is more like a rahasya. It is not revealed to everyone. And Bhagavan is telling here that devotion is a must for understanding this. Surrender to the Lord, Bhakti, devotion is a must. And friendship, Sakha Bhava, is optional for knowing many of the devotees. They relate to the Lord with the Sakha Bhava. They talk to the Lord. Sometimes they praise the Lord. Sometimes they 
you know, uh, sometimes they would even curse the Lord or, you know, they would, uh, learn ka patlab hai, they would, uh, you know, say some harsh words or even uh, disrespect the Lord. But it's all in the sakha bhav, it's all in the, in the friendship mode, they would say uh, to the Lord. So that's, that is optional for understanding the knowledge, but devotee, being a devotee is very important. Bhakti is one of the very important sadhana to understand the Atma Jnana. Bhakti is not the final destination. Vedan clearly shows us the path that Bhakti is an important sadhana, but Bhakti is not the final destination. The final destination is the knowledge. We have to understand it is the knowing of this, our own Atma Swarupa, and that is nothing but the Brahma Swarupa. It is this uh, final understanding which is essential. And Arjuna asks a very innocent question. To Bhagavana, Arjuna Uvacha, Aparam Bhavato Janma, Param Janma Vivasvataha, Kathametat Krijaniyam, Tvamadav Proktavaniti. Arjuna says, how is it possible, Bhagavan? Bhavataha Janma Aparam, you have been just born recently, few years ago. Along with me, you have grown up. I have known you for years. I know that you have been born recently, few years ago. Vivaswata Janma Param and the son was born many many years ago, thousands of years ago. Then how is it possible? How can I know? How can I understand this? Bhagavan, when you say that this is the same knowledge that you gave to the son at the beginning of the world because you have just been born recently. How is it understand? Arjuna is confused. He doesn't understand. He thinks Bhagavan is still his friend and that's why he has this doubt. He requests for some evidence. He wants to understand. How can I know that it's the same knowledge that you gave to son that you are giving to me at this point of time? And in response, Bhagavan takes this opportunity to reveal his Ishwaratva, his godliness to Arjuna. Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Bahuni Me Vyati Tani Janmani Tavacharjuna Anya Hamveda Sarvani Natvam Vitha Parantapa Bhagavan Krishna shows the difference between Ishwar and Jiva to Arjuna. And he says Ishwara is the all-knower, he is the Sarvagnya, whereas Jiva is the Alpagnya, he knows very little. That's what Bhagavan says, tells him, He Parantapa ho Arjun, Bahuni me vyati tani janmani. I have had many births previously. Tava cha Arjuna. And ho Arjun, even you have had undergone many, many births before. Tani Sarvani, all these previous births, yours as well as mine. Bhagavan says, what is the difference? Aham Veda. Bhagavan says, I know all these births, the, all the initial births, all the later births of yours as well as mine. I have the complete knowledge. Natvam Vedha. Arjun, you or Jiva doesn't know. You only know very little about this birth and about your past experiences. And you are not going to know about your past birth, neither you are going to know about your future births. So you have a very limited understanding, a very limited knowledge, except this. That is the difference between the Jiva and the Ishwara. Jiva is Alpagna, has Alpabuddhi, knows little. Bhagavan is Sarvagna, he is all knower, he knows everything, he knows all the births of previous, and that is one of the characteristics or at uh, of, of, of Ishwara. In the next three shokas, Bhagavan is now going to talk about his Artha Avtara. Prakarana is incarnation, how Bhagavan takes human form, why he takes. So the sixth loka he talks about what is the true self of the Lord and how does he take the human form from this true self. Then Bhagavan seventh shloka and eighth shloka are very, very well-known shlokas of Bhagavad Gita. Most of you would have heard this. Yada yada hi dharmasya paritranaya sadhuna. Uh, so he says in the seventh shloka, yada yada hi dharmasya, he says, when does he incarnate? And in the eighth shloka, Paritranaya Sadhunam, he says, why does he take to need to take human form? Why does he need to incarnate? This is the three shlokas are called the Avtar Prakaran of Gita Ji. In the sixth shloka, Bhagavan says, Ajopi Sannavyayatma. Ajopi Sannavyayatma Bhuta Nami Shwaropi San Prakrutim Swamadishtaya Sambhavamyatma Mayaya. Bhagavan tells us what is the original form of the Lord and how God incarnates, he says. Ajaha api. Even though I am unborn, ajaha means ajanma. Bhagavan is anjanma. Bhagavan never takes birth. But even then, he takes a birth and it assumes a human form. He says, son, 
avyay atma api even though i am eternal i am changeless and bhagwan shows his paramarthik swarupa his fundamental swarupa oh, uh, that is a brahma swarupa which is unborn which is eternal which is changeless doesn't change it is unmanifest it is avyakta that is the swarupa of the lord that is the swarupa of bhagwan he shows here very clearly he says bhuta naam ishwar ha pisan and even though i am the lord of all the bhuta bhuta means all the beings not just human beings all the creatures all the animals all the plants animals and all the species all the creatures he says i am the lord because bhagwan is a creator of everything he is the lord of everything he is the ishwara bhagwan says even though i am brahma i am ishwara but prakrutim swamadishtaya i take the nature the prakruti my own prakruti maya i take under my control adishtaya he takes under his control and maya that's why it's called brahma shraya maya maya is ashrit to brahma a subservient to brahma brahma has the complete control ishwara has the complete control over the maya so brahma takes help of maya brahma is nirgun nirakar unmanifest avyakta takes the help of this maya shakti and then uh, ishwara is created who is a saguna sakara and from this the creation develops bhagwan ishwara is the creator of this creation is a vinna nimitta upadana karana of this creation and the difference between ishwara and jiva is that jiva is under the control of prakruti or maya whereas ishwara controls the maya ishwara never comes under the influence of maya so that is a major difference bhagwan says sambhavami i manifest i assume this human form i incarnate whenever i need it whenever i wish to i am not under control of anything i am independent atma maya and how does this bhagwan says i manifest by atma maya by wielding my own powers of maya shakti and maya is a shakti it's a power of the lord which is a creative power through which he creates this universe and with that shakti he deludes everyone with this same shakti manifest in us individually in vyashti as ignorance agnana and which also deludes all of us and does not allow us to understand our real tatvik swarupa atma gnana and this is what bhagwan says how the god incarnates what is the original form of the lord brahma ishwara and then he takes help of maya and creates this universe and with his own shakti he creates it so jiva is born out of our own karma kartrutva and agnana and this is what is the cause of the jiva's uh you know uh but but the god's birth is different explaining this difference between the human birth and the incarnation of the lord uh guru ji explains us how human birth is different from god's incarnation human birth is essentially due to karma we do a lot of karma action and this actions produce the karma phala and with this karma phala we get the next birth so all of our karmas they accumulate and create this karma phala for which we need to take the another birth because karma we do it and it causes bondage that is how jiva normally does karma whereas god though he does karma in his incarnation but this karma does not cause bondage to the lord because bhagwan is sarvagna is completely gnana swarupa so he is he is going to tell us namam karmani limpanti this my karmas don't bind me whereas jiva karmas bind the jiva the root cause of the karma that we keep doing is agnana our own ignorance of what ignorance of our own self our true real self the atma swarupa and this ignorance creates this karma and then that's how we keep on having this repeated birth and death birth and death cycles and in in the lord bhagwan does not have any ignorance because bhagwan has complete knowledge is paripurna with gnana and that's why he has no agnana and that's why the prarabdha karma of humans we have vyashti vyashti means individual and samashti means universal because of our vyashti karma we get a particular birth and because of our samashti karma means we have done our karmas with a lot of other beings or other people in the past and that's why in this birth we get those people as our relatives our mother father son daughter wife husband friends and all the other social so that is a samashti karma which uh, gives us this kind of a you know birth in a particular family in a particular way whereas lord has only samashti as a prarabdha karma means samashti karma means if there is going bhagwan is going to tell us that paritrana hai sadhuna vinasha hai chit dushtam that some samashti adharma is increasing then bhagwan takes part so samashti prarabdha karma is there for the lord but vyashti there is no karma because there is no agnana and the jiva has a lot of kartrutva ahankara and that is what 
makes us do karma. We feel that I am the doer, I am the doer, and that's why we keep doing this action by this kartrutva ahankara. Bhagavan does not have any kartrutva ahankara. He's are the pure shuddha aham. He doesn't have ahankara or limitation of this ahankara in the body, mind, sense complex as we have. Whereas Bhagavan is a shuddha aham. And that's why we are dependent on maya for our and we are dependent on a lot of other people for doing our karma. Bhagavan is completely independent with his sarvagna. He is not dependent on neither maya or others for doing his actions or taking his birth by his own swamaya, swamaya, by his own inclination, by his own desire, Bhagavan takes birth. The humans don't have uh, this independence. They have their avasya. We have to take birth. We don't know where we will take the next birth. We you know, have to bind to this karma, karma phala principle and take this birth according to the system. The next shloka Bhagavan says, when does God incarnate on this earth or take human form? Yada yada hi dharmasya la nirbhavati bharata abhyutthanam dharmasya adatmanam srujamyaham Bhagavan says, oh Bharat, Bharat is the salutation to Arjuna who is born in the Bharata dynasty. Bha, Bha means light, is the light of knowledge. And we Indians who are born in Bharata Desha, we also have this having this light of knowledge, that opportunity to understand this light of knowledge. Yada yada hi dharmasya glani hi bhavati. Bhagavan says, O Arjun, whenever there is decline or decay of dharma, dharma in Gita ji means the right way of living, the righteous way of living, what is the correct thing we need to do according to our morals, our values. And <clears throat> This dharma is protected by the people who follow this dharma. Those are the dharmi, dharmo rakshita rakshataha. Those who follow the dharma, they are rakshita by the dharma. It is what our scriptures tell us. Abhyutthanam adharmasya. And whenever there is increase in adharma, the wrong way of living, the wrong people who follow the wrong way of living, want to crush others, want to subdue others, want to do violence, want to do adharma, all the dishonest ways, all this adharma, whenever it arises, Bhagavan says, then I manifest myself and I take the human form, Bhagavan says. And the next shloka, Bhagavan tells us about the reasons for God's incarnation. He says, Paritranaya sadhunam vinashaya chadushkrutam dharma sansthapanarthaya sambhavami yuge yuge. So Bhagavan is giving us three reasons for his incarnation. He says, Paritranaya sadhunam to protect and nurture the righteous persons, the sadhu purusha, the people who follow the right path, the dharma path. And the devotees always say that Bhagavan takes incarnation to give them darshana, to you know, to give them this beautiful darshana of his avatar swarupa, Lord Krishna is such a manamohana, he is uh, such a beautiful uh, you know, form he has taken, which entices a lot of seekers to them, to, to him, to attracts to him. And that is the reason the devotees say, Destroy the Adharmi Purusha, Dushkruta, those who perform unrightful actions or wrong actions or unlawful or unjust actions to destroy these people, Adharmis. When Bhagavan takes incarnation, it destroys a lot of Rakshasa, demons, those who are uh, into this dest destruction and Vinash. Dharma Sanstapanar, Bhagavan says to establish, to re establish the Dharma. Because when the Adharmis, the Dushkruta, the demons, they increase, you know, then dharma is lost and the dharma increases. And then dharma, to again re-establish the dharma, Bhagavan says, I take birth uh, in this sambhavami yuge yuge. I incarnate, I take this human form, Bhagavan says. Yuge yuge means at every yuga. You have four yugas. But it is not that in one yuga, Bhagavan takes only one incarnation. It's not like that. In some yugas, Bhagavan has taken many incarnations. So whenever needed, Bhagavan takes incarnation. It is not dependent on anyone. Whenever he wants to, when he feels that now the dharma has increased so much, then I will need to take incarnation. He will take, he will incarnate at his own will. And in every incarnation could be one of the three reasons. It's not necessarily that he need to, he needs to fulfill all the three reasons. It's up to his choice whenever he wants to incarnate. And then in the next shloka, Bhagavan says that one who understands my incarnation, tattvataha, tattvataha means in reality, he becomes free from the cycle of birth and death. Bhagavan says, Janma karma cha me divyam evam yo vetti tattvataha tyaktva deham punar janma naiti ma meti surjuna. 
भगवान से जन्म कर्म च मे दिव्य माई बर्थ माई जन्म एंड माई एक्शन बोथ आर डिवाइन भगवान से very few people understand this they are completely independent whatever i do i am not bound to my actions i am not bound by anything else i am completely free to do whatever i wish to be and divya means it is a blessing blessing for all because if we understand if we think about his leela his janma his karma then it gives a lot of peace and it helps us to go on this adhyatmic path evam yah vetti tatvatah bhagwan says who understands it tatvatah means truly in real sense paramarthik swarupa in the real original way if somebody understands that god is the pure consciousness he is without form he is himself has said that he does not have any form and from there he takes assumes a form or comes on this as an incarnate bhagwan says sah that person yaktwa deham when he leaves his own body his or her own body punah janma na eti does not get any rebirth he is relieved from the sansara chakra of birth and death Mam eti he attains me he attains moksha attains freedom does not attain rebirth. So Bhagwan is talking here about moksha because once a person gets moksha once he knows truly what is the nature of the Lord one who understands Bhagwan is tatvataha knows that he is one with the Lord and with this aikriya gnan he develops he gets moksha is his freedom and that person gets a sadeha mukti during the life itself he gets mukti gets freedom from all the limitations and even after death. gets videha mukti videha mukti means after death does not have to born again and again and that person is who is a person who has got moksha so bhagwan when bhagwan says yah vetti tatvatah one who knows this reality bhagwan is trying to tell us what is our vastavik swarupa and to understand the tatvik swarupa of the lord also and that is itself is the truth of the existence that is a brahma swarupa and if we go deep into it then brahma swarupa and atma swarupa is one and the same it's all aikya that is what our upanishads tell us aham brahmasmi i and brahma are not different so tatva the word itself in our shastras means anaropi takar which cannot be identified on any form so there is it is ajanma swarupa tatvik bhagwan is unborn ajanma sarvavyapaka omnipresent everywhere is changeless and this understanding that myself my swarupa and the bhagwan's swarupa is the same aham brahmasmi that is a final understanding only then and then it has to be aparoksha gyan it has to be assimilated within us directly realized within us not just paroksha gyan not in theory we know it but we have assimilated in our life then we develop we get this mukti the gyan se mukti the next shloka bhagwan talks about the spiritual journey he describes in just one shloka he describes the entire spiritual journey how to attain this aham brahmasmi the state of uh, understanding uh, how bhagwan says vitaraga bhaya krodha manmaya mam upashrita ha bahavo gnan tapasa uta mad bhav magata ha so bhagwan says vitaraga bhaya krodha ha one who has conquered all the raga all the attachments bhaya fear and krodha anger so essentially means that he has developed antakarna shuddhi purity of the inner mind and this is possible only by karma yoga bhagwan has already talked about this so that is the first step in the spiritual journey bhagwan says man maya one who has become wants to become one with me one whose goal is just me does not have the goal to get or ambitions of getting a lot of things from this material world but spiritual is the only main goal that is a dhye nishtha mam upashrita one who is surrendered to me and bhakti is the only way to surrender to the lord completely to his ichha to his desires whatever happens to me whatever happens is his desire bhakta always has this surrender bhavana this sharanagati so that is another important step of the spiritual journey karma yoga bhakti yoga dhye nishta and then finally bhagwan says bahavah bahavah means many literal meaning is many gnana tapasa putah putah means they become pious by the fire of discipline tapasa tapasa means tapascharya the finance of the knowledge the fire the gnana tapascharya they do with lot of discipline they do this gnana tapascharya gnana nishtha continuously they do shravana manana nididhyasana and they ultimately go and achieve this gnana nishtha this atma gnana so that is only possible by knowledge that is a final goal bhagwan is describing the entire spiritual journey 
and with this journey what happens what is the final destination bhagwan says madhavam agataha they attain me only they attain my real self become one with me and they develop oneness with me that aikya itself is the ultimate knowledge that we need to understand so vita vita means one who has given up you have to let go in this spiritual journey the more important is to letting go to let go of things raga you have to let go of a lot of attachments that we have with people objects and surroundings and this is only possible by karma yoga by the samatva bhavana buddhi yoga what bhagwan has talked about in the second and the third adhyaya bhaya we have a lot of fear fear of disease fear of our death fear of the death of our near and dear ones fear of our old age fear of losing things fear of lots of fears we have uh, sometimes you know we don't even understand what kind of fears we have but it is important to realize and understand that these fears are unreal they are not real and we have to come out of this this can only be by possible by karma yoga and bhakti yoga krodha the third thing that bhagwan tells us to vita to give up is krodha krodha is this the root of all the anger is the desires kama krodha uh, bhagwan has already said in the third adhyaya that uh, arjuna ka kama esha krodha esha rajo guna samudbhava uh, so he is the desires kama is the root of all the krodha and they are our real enemies ಜರ್ನಿಕ್ರೋಧ the spiritual journey requires to practice many sadhanas the means to attain the end to attain the goal and the goal is only one in our spiritual journey but there are many many sadhanas we can take help to overcome the obstacles that we have to get the real desired benefit so that's what we need to understand what are those means the first and the foremost goal that guruji tells us is karma yoga is a sadhana the main obstacle is the raga dvesha our attachments our dvesha raga kama krodha mada moha matsarya all these our obstacles the shuddhis that we have in our mind have to be given up and the benefit is that we get the purity or antakarana shuddhi the mind purity second is bhakti yoga bhakti yoga takes care of our chanchalta we have a lot of restlessness in us you know this does not allow us to become focused concentrated to sit at one place to do some med- meditation contemplation and bhakti helps us to develop this ekagrata concentration focus ashtanga yoga all the patanjali eight types of yama niyama asana pranayama sadhana dhyana uh, samadhi all these ashtanga yoga helps us to take care of our indisciplined lifestyle and makes us more disciplined niyamita so this is very important and finally the gnana yoga takes care of our agnana our which is the root cause of all the problems and gives us the atma gnana which relieves us from all these limitations of our life and we need to travel the same path bhagwan says tells us that this is an ancient path you don't have to create a new path you have to just walk on that path is going to tell arjuna in the next shloka also and essentially what we have understood is that there are two choices for us for people like us who are committed to action karma nishta when we become a sadhaka we become a seeker we have to use our mind viveka vichara give a lot of thought and finally choose the first path is the karma yoga lokes mein dvida nishta the first path is karma yoga nishta on the sadhana which is the beginning and when we develop the shuddhi necessary that is the first goal then we reach to the path of knowledge the gnana yoga nishta and then with the gnana sadhana we have to reach the final destination which is the self knowledge the gnana nishta so goal is only one but the ways are many we can take the use help of all these ways and the spiritual journey essentially is in two parts the first part is to become eligible to understand this divine knowledge that is called adhikaritva to develop this the sadhana is called sadhana chatushtaya sampatti and this sadhana chatushtaya sampatti is the four four fold shama adi shat sampatti so the uh, the shama shama is uh, is is mind control mana nidraha dama is a sense control bhagwan has already told in the second adhyaya yada sambharate chayam indriya sanyama so important in the third adhyaya bhagwan says rag indriya se indriya syate rag dvesha vyavasthito tayor navasham agachet so the indriya sanyama has already been stressed a lot 
and through indriya sanyama through dama then we have to reach to sama shama where there is a sahaja effortless control of the indriya and then uparati we have to relieve from our useless work by not giving too much importance to the matters which are not of importance to reach our goal from useless karma titiksha bhagwan has already said earlier batras par shastra kaunte hai tan titiksha so bharata in life there are ups and downs you endure them be sahanshil be titiksha it's a very important part of the sadhana shraddha shraddha has already been said so many times and bhagwan is already going to talk about shraddha in gita ji shraddha van labate gnanam only people who have faith in, are able to understand this gnana faith in the guru faith in the vedanta faith in the lord faith in the creator this system all this is important samadhana samadhana is a concentration of the mind chitta ekagrata and that is very important only then we can understand and become eligible for atma gnana and the final pursuit of knowledge the gnana nishtha is by three main important sadhanas the first and the foremost and the most important sadhana through which gnana we know is by listening to the upanishada mahavakyas from the learned tattvavit guru and this is the main considered to be the main sadhana but this gnana that we hear is more like a paroksha gnana we know that yes this is what we need to understand with this is the reality but then it does not get assimilated in our life and because of two main obstacles one is the doubts sanshaya and there so many doubts are there because we have lot of we have listened to so many people and lot of things and that's why and this have to be relieved by yukti the logic logical reasoning but this yukti we have to use according to our shastra according to our scriptures not by our own self or what what people say about it according to shastra and using the yuktis and prakriyas and lot of grantha there are these yuktis are there and we can take care of our sanshaya by manan and the third and the final sadhan to assimilate this knowledge completely is the vedantic meditation the nididhyasana which helps me to change this viparit sanskara the contrary impressions of the past which are very strongly ingrained within me i need to change this viparit sanskara this is another big obstacle and that's why we need to take care of this to understand atma gnana and to assimilate it completely in our life so that our life when we when we live this life we are full of this knowledge we live out of this knowledge and bhagwan in the next shloka says that people get what they desire for bhagwan is trying to tell that if arjun is trying to ask if everybody why everybody does not go through this spiritual journey why do they not attain you when you are saying that this is attainable by bahava gnana tapasa many people can attain why most of the people don't attain this bhagwan says what we reap we sow ye yatha mam prapadyante tanstathaiv bhajamyaham mama vartmanu vartante manushya parth sarvashah bhagwan says o parth putha putra kunti sputra ye yatha mam prapadyante the devotees who worship me in whatever ways जैसे भी वो वर्षिप करते हैं तान तथा मनुष्य सर्वश मम वर्तमान अनुवर्तन ऑल ह्यूम एसेंशियली that is what they want that's why they keep doing this they don't understand that what they do or what they want is essentially they want to follow my path they want to come to me but they are they are not knowing this and they they do it for the sake of getting the worldly pleasures but ultimately it is for so most people want this world they want the bhoga all the sense pleasures that are available in this sansara that is what we want we want our ambitions are there we want to achieve we want wealth we want possessions we want position we want power we want education we want degrees we want a lot of things but very few people want to attain him that is the final goal yoga to unite with the lord that is very few people want it that that's why bhagwan says that few people are able to achieve me and why many do not desire for this freedom this knowledge this moksha the reason bhagwan is also giving bhagwan says kaanshanta karmanam siddhim यजंत इह देवता क्षिप्र ही मनुषे लोके सिद्धिर्भवति कर्मजा भगवान से कांक्षंत कर्मणाम सिद्धि मोस्ट डिजायर द फ्रूट्स ऑफ कर्म एवरीबॉडी डज नॉट डिजायर मोक्षा 
बिकॉज दे वर्शिप देवता या जनते दे वर्शिप डिफरेंट डिटीज और देवता यह मानुषे लोके बिकॉज इन दिस ह्यूमन वर्ल्ड भगवान से कर्म जा सिद्धि शिप्रम भवती द रिजल्ट ऑफ एक्शन आर वेरी क्विक दी ओपटेन्ड and that's why people are just fascinated with quick results they want everything quickly nobody has any patience nobody wants to wait they don't want to continue their sadhana they want to do something they want to achieve something lot of people tell me that why don't you still summarize gita ji this is still quite long for us and then i need to tell them that this is already a very small summary of gita ji gita ji itself is very vast we need to give adequate time to understand what bhagwan is trying to tell us this is something that is difficult for us to understand but people are generally fascinated with very quick results and karma provides those kind of quick results explaining this further guru ji tells us why most people prefer to do karma and not go to knowledge or moksha because the results of karma are immediate we do some work and we get some compensation out of it either it could be monetary it could be in other forms it could be in praise it could be our own self satisfaction it could be anything but the comp- the compensation is there and this compensation is tangible it is seen in terms of something you know it could be some object it could be some uh, some money it could be some anything so it is tangible it is could be a praise it could be anything so this is seen and people always have a very strong sanskara they have a strong feeling that only by doing something we can achieve something so karma karenge kuch milega so that's why we keep doing our karma whereas on the other part the journey of knowledge the gnana sadhana is a path which is very long which is very very arduous path because it takes a long time it needs a lot of preparation antakarana shuddhi and finally on the knowledge path people need to change their lifestyle personality beliefs completely and most of the times we are not willing to change ourselves completely to understand what is being given or said by the lord we just want to believe what we have thought for so many years our belief systems are so strong that they don't change easily and we always have a belief that whatever we achieve or accept or grahana then we achieve something we feel like yes if we achieve something we have got something we have uh, you know we have possessed something but we never feel that by giving away by letting go by tyaga we can achieve something there is something we have never understood we have never experienced and that's why on the knowledge path we have to let go of a lot of things our own attachments our own wrong beliefs of no misconceptions of notions false notions lot of thing we have to give up on the knowledge path and then if we give up then we will achieve something we will become enriched we don't understand this uh, idea and that's the problem and the next shloka bhagwan says this vedic dharma not only i am the creator of this universe but even this dharma and the social order because of the dharma the vyavastha the varna vyavastha is all created by me bhagwan says in the vedas चातुर्वर्ण्यम मैया सृष्ट गुणकर्म विभागश तस्कर्ताकर्ताव्ययटेड दिस चातुर्वर्ण्य मैया सृष्ट दिस यूनिवर्स विथ फोर वर्ण चातुर्वर्ण्यम एंड दिस भगवान क्रिएटेड फॉर द बैलेंस इन द सोसायटी बिकॉज द गोल ऑफ द सोसायटी वॉज टू ओबटेन मोक्ष टू ओबटेन ज्ञान टू हैव दैट कैंड ऑफ अ balance in the society created this varna vyavastha and this was based on bhagwan says guna karma vibhagasha this was based according to the three gunas what is the predominant guna based on this the varnas were determined and it was based on karma vibhaga the duties what karma somebody was doing based on that he was or he or she was given that varna and this was never according to birth but over a period of time it became that this varna vyavastha became according to birth and that's why it was given a bad repute or a bad name tasya kartaram apiman even though you understand that i was the kartaram i was the creator i was the doer of this or creator of this varna vyavastha bhagwan says avyayam akartaram vidhi you consider me as the eternal non doer eternally as a atma swarupa i was i am the non doer i am a karta i am changeless i am indestructible consciousness and i am non doer i am a karta by swarupa i cannot create anything but still you considered that this was my creation and god has no kartrutva no doership feeling and that's why bhagwan is akarta by swarupa and that's why we need a guru to understand this contradictory words in just one line bhagwan says tasya kartaram apimam understand that i am the creator and then says vidya kartaram apyayam you and consider that i am the non creator i am not the doer you understand that i am the doer i am not the doer so we this are a very contradictory meaning and to understand this 
clearly we need the help of a guru who can explain us that Bhagwan says that understand that I have done this but also understand that by Swarupa, by my Tatvik Swarupa, I am Akarta, I am the, you know, I, I cannot do anything but still I am the doer. So that is the understanding. And this Vedic system of Varna Ashrama Vavastha consisting of four Varnas was uh, created for the balance in the society, the Brahmana, uh, the Kshatriya, the Vaishya and the Shudra. These are the four Varnas and the four Ashrama for the welfare of the individual, for the upliftment of the individual was the Brahmacharya Ashrama, Guruvastha Ashrama, Vanprastha Ashrama and the Sanyas Ashrama. Essentially, all people had common values which was common to all these Varna and Ashrama but there were some special values for particular varnas, particular ashrama, which they needed to understand. So essentially, this was based on the gunas, the sattva, rajas or tamas, how we practice, or based on karmas, what we are doing. And based on this, we were given the varna, whether it was brahmana or kshatriya. It was never based on birth. Bhagavan has already said this very clearly. So this varna vavastha, or essentially brahmana was a sattva predominant and was based... The main purpose of Brahmana was to uphold this knowledge and pass it on to generations. Kshatriya were the Rajas Guna predominant. They were into karma and they were more selfless. They were the protectors of the society. Vaishya were the Rajas Guna predominant, but they were more self-centered. They were the business people who used to do business. And Shudra were the Tamas predominant people who are the followers, the service class or the workers, essentially. In any society, even today, there are such four distinctions. There is one, the Brahmana. They are the intellectual class, the knowledgeable, the scientists, the researchers, the engineers, the doctors, and all the people who are knowledge-based economy, the ITs, the technocrats, and all those. The Kshatriyas are the protectors, the army, the air force, the police, all, the, all these people are the Kshatriyas. The Vaishyas are the business people, the entrepreneurs, the, com the, the people who create jobs, who do businesses, those who earn money. And Shudras are the Tamas, are the followers, or the workers. Uh, the, the people who are the service class of the society. So even today, these distinctions are there, though these names are not there. The four ashramas that are based for individuals are meant for four pursuits, the Dharma, Artha, Kama and Moksha. Essentially, the first is the Brahmacharya Ashrama. And at that point of time, the lifespan of the individual was almost 100 years. And that's why each of these ashrama was 25 years. In today's life, we have an average lifespan, say about 80 years, then we can divide this to 20 years of each. The first 20 years is the Brahmacharya Ashram, which was meant to understand the Dharma, to obtain the knowledge, to get a roadmap of how you want to live the life according to the values, the skills you want to learn, all the life skills, not just the knowledge, but all the warrior skills, everything, the Dharma was clearly mentioned. So Dharma was the first pursuit and finally the final pursuit was the Moksha. That was the final goal. The Gruvastha Ashram was to for the action-oriented people, the karma pradhana people, and for the family, we need to do karma and artha. We have to obtain some wealth. Also, we have to earn money, do some desires, have fulfill all our desires in a dharma with a practical life, being selfless for others and species, doing pancha yagna. And the aim is for upliftment. Aim is final. Aim is the moksha. And then the one prastha ashram where bhakti is the predominant sadhana, where we need to wind up what we have already created, a lot of things. And we have to prepare to let go, go more inwards and we can remain in the home and do this sadhana. And finally the sannyas ashram where we have to let go of everything. And finally the goal is only Atma Jnana and Moksha. In the next shloka Bhagavan says, one who has clear knowledge of Ishwara is not bound by actions. Namam karmani limpanti name karma phales pruha iti maam yo vijanati. Karma bhirna sat Bhagavan says, Maam karmani na limpanti. My actions don't bind me. Shri Krishna, for his entire life, he was in karma, he was in actions, he used to do lots of things. But Bhagavan says, My actions don't bind me, do not create bondage for me. Name karma phales pruha. I have no attachments to the fruits of actions because Bhagavan is purna gnana swarupa. He does everything with complete knowledge. And that's why his karma phala does not attach him. Karma Phala, Iti Hamam Yobi Janati. Bhagavan says, in this way, one who understands me, one who knows me clearly as Akarta, non doer, Abhokta, non enjoyer, this is my Atma Sarupa. Bhagavan says, Karma Bhir Nasabhatyate. That person also does not get bound by actions because when, Bhagavan, when that person knows me as a 
अकर्ता भोक्ता स्वरूप that person automatically understand that his own atma swarupa his own real self is also the same akarta abhokta atma swarupa and that's why that person also does not get bondage so bhagwan is now telling arjuna to follow the footsteps of the lineage of your forefathers and do karma yoga evam gnatva krutam karma purvair api mumukshu bihi kuru karma ev tasmatvam purvai purvataram krutam Evam vinatva. By knowing me in this way, Bhagwan has already said that I am akarta, bhokta, asanga, by atma swarupa. My real tattvic swarupa is satchit and ananda. And by knowing me in this way, purvai api mumukshu bihi, krutam karma. The seekers of the ancient times they performed their actions by this method. They used, they did karma yoga. Asma tvam guru eva karma. That's why. You also do all your actions, your prescribed duties. He's telling Arjuna, not just Arjuna, to all of us, the entire humanity. He's telling that we must do our prescribed duties by understanding, by knowing that the Lord is Akarta Abhokta Swarupa, and just as your own forefathers, Purvai hi, Purvataram Krutam, your forefathers, they have done in the ancient times, they have done the same thing. Arjuna, you also do the same thing. You follow the footsteps of your lineage. You don't need to create a new path. The path is already laid down. With us, from sakama, from selfish actions, we have to go more towards nishkam karma, karma yoga, and then from karma we have to go towards akam, that, that gnana by shuddhi karma leads to shuddhi, and then shuddhi leads to gnana. This is the step that your forefathers have followed, and you also follow the same. And Bhagwan is now telling in the next shloka to Arjuna that the true meaning of karma and a karma needs to be understood. Kim karma kim karma ti kavayo pyatra mohita ha. तत्ते कर्म प्रवक्षा In details, Bhagwan is telling Arjuna, "Yaj knatwa moksha se shubhat ashubhat." By knowing which, you will be liberated from this uh, ashubha, all the sins, sinful world, and achieve moksha, achieve the freedom, achieve oneness with uh, with your own self. Bhagwan is telling Arjuna, and in the next, uh, he again says that the true meaning of karma needs to be understood. Karma no yapi bodhavyam bodhavyam cha vi karma na ha. ोइंगोइंग and bhagwan says akarmana hacha bodhavyam and also is no, uh, worth knowing what is actionlessness what is akarmana being inactive in action he karmana gati gahana bhagwan says the nature of karma is very deep it is a very important shloka very nice words bhagwan says karma karma phala the gati of karma and the karma phala is very very difficult to understand for humans for us alpagnya for limited intellect why we do something and get some other result is something that we cannot understand we always keep questioning why i did so much but i didn't get this result i did get this outcome i wrote such a good paper but i got low marks i did so well but i didn't get a positive outcome i did very good business but i didn't get a lot of profit we keep doing this karma karma phala and all throughout our life we do karma and what is the next karma phala next birth we are going to get where we are going to get we don't understand this we don't know this system it is a this system which is which is created by the lord which is upheld by the lord by his own system but it's a very fair and a just system that is what we have to faith we have to have faith in that system bhagwan says karmana gati gahana it's very deep the nature of the karma karma phala is something which is beyond it is beyond our own understanding we cannot fathom this uh, karma karma phala and that's why we should not think about that So what Bhagwan is trying to tell us is about a karma, and it's very important to understand what is the word a karma. A karma normally would mean inactivity or absence of movement, cheshta, 
just remaining actionless, being lazy, being inactive. That is a normal understanding or a literal translation, dictionary translation of akarma or inaction. But in Gita Ji, the word akarma is not just the absence of movements or being in action, inactive. But even being in action, being in activity, we can be a karma, we can be in, act, in action. And for the wise person who is in Atma Swarupa, Atma Swarupa itself is a karma by nature. It is a karta. There is no karma in Atma. So the wise person, while he is in action or in inaction, he is in a karma, he is treated in Atma Swarupa. And this is what is the understanding with Bhagwan is giving in the next shloka, which is a very difficult to understand shloka. Bhagwan tells us the correct attitude and the vision of the wise. He says, Karmanya karmaya pashe karmani cha karmaya sabuddhiman manushe su sayukta krutsna karma kruta. Bhagavan says, Yaha karmani akarma pashe, one who sees action in inaction. Chaya akarmani karma, and one who sees inaction in action. Sabuddhiman manushe su, that person is a person who has wisdom, real intelligence. Sayuktaha is a real yogi, is a viveki, is a wise person, Krutsna Karma Kruta, and has performed all the actions with being complete in actions, and fulfilled in all the actions, does not have anything more to do. So this Bhagwan is telling us that it's a very hidden meaning of these words, can only be explained by Guru. It looks very, very difficult for us to understand that one who sees action in inaction and one who sees inaction in action is a really a wise person. That is a literal meaning of the shloka. It is very difficult to understand without the explaining of the Guru. And the Guru explains us that ignorance, Agnana, is the main cause of all the problems, gives rise to Kartrutva, Abhimana, the doership through which we perform the karmas. And these karmas create sanskaras, the beach, which again lead to our Kartrutva, our doership. And this cycle goes on and on. This cycle can only be destroyed when Agnana is destroyed and the Gnana is revealed. Then only this cycle can be destroyed and this sansara chakra can be lost. So finally, Gnana Karma Sanyasa Yoga, the renunciation of action by self-knowledge leading to freedom, moksha itself. What is the understanding that the, for the wise person, the pravrutti and nivrutti both are karma. This is what is the understanding of Krishna that while the wise, unwise person, sorry, the ignorant or the unwise person is in pravrutti, is in action, he still is in karma. But while he is in nivrutti, he is still thinking about the karma and that's why he is also in karma. So karma just doesn't mean physical karma. Even mind, how it is working, that is also karma according to our Shastra. For the wise person who is a Gnani, Pravrutti as well as Nivrutti, both are a karma. Because in Pravrutti, the wise also sees a karma and in Nivrutti also that wise is Sthita in a karma. And that's why for the wise, both are in for the wise, the understanding is that karma appears or happens in the body-mind complex, the anatma, whereas the true self, the atma, is a karma, a karta, a sangha, bhokta. And the understanding, the take-home message for us is that while we do our activity, we do all our prescribed actions, our kartam, the karma, we should always keep the vision of our real self, our akarta, atma, swarupa, in our mind. We do it as a witness, as we are seeing it, as we are role-playing it, as, as we see a movie on the screen, we don't see the screen, we see the movie. Similarly here, we keep doing all the karma, but we are the screen on which all these movies, scenes are being flashed. And this is the karma, which is something that is, uh, you know, it's our, and that's why finally, over a period of time, when Gnan happens, the karma will fall off by itself, like a ripened fruit. We don't have to take away karma. Bhagavan has clearly said, Karma tyag nahi karna hai, karma sanyas nahi karna hai. But karma sanyas will happen like a ripened fruit when gnan happens, when shuddhi happens, gnan happens, karma will fall off by itself. And that is what is the gnana karma sanyasa yoga. With this, we come to the end of the first session of the fourth adhyaya, the gnana karma sanyasa yoga. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwara, Guru Sakshat Para Brahma. Tasmai Shri Gurve Namaha Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 
शांति शांति